one more stack example, if you would. I, I'm going to come down here and say static void one method and static void two method. And these methods will pretty much be identical except for some data types. Short s gets, let's do a value we will recognize in RAM. Let's do 8. And then if I don't do something with s, the compiler will optimize it out. So let's call console right line s there. And then here I'm going to say char c gets the best character ever, my first initial. And same deal have to trick the compiler into not optimizing C away, so we will print the value of C here. And then here in main, I'm going to call one method, and then I will call two method. So let's just step through execution on this visually before we actually make the debugger do it for us. Let me get my nice and thin. First of all, notice there's no news. We're not doing anything with the heap, so I'm not going to draw the heap. I'm going to draw the bottom of the stack there as far as we are concerned. We call one method, we will step in here and we will say short s, which will put a short on here. We will call s, and we'll stuff an 8 right there. But then we eventually return out of this method, or this instantiation of this method, which means this value will come off the stack. But we've seen in videos not too far from this one behind us that Yes, the value comes off the stack in theory, but it's still out there in memory. We're just kind of abandoning it there. We we took that piece of memory, we stuffed an 8 in there, and now we're pretending it's dead to us, even though the 8 is there. But, but that's how it goes. So then we come back and we return, and then we're going to jump into 2 method right here, which will take us right into here, and then all of a sudden we make the C, this char C, which will put it on the stack, and this C takes the exact same memory that this s took before. But now I'm going to put the integer number for the ASCII or Unicode value for a j. I can't remember what that value is, so I'm just going to say j here. But this j takes the exact same memory that this s did prior to us because we called one method and then we called two method. Had we called two method before one method, then, then the results would be swapped. Now I can prove to you this is actually how it works. Let's do the hardcore gnarly thing where I have my memory here, have my registers. Again, don't worry about what all this means. Just go watch the assembly programming playlist if you really want to learn this. All right, let's get into one method. I'm going to grab the value of the stack pointer because that points to where my stack is residing. So 0x, control V, hit enter. And looks like this is the address. So let me scroll up here. And I'm actually going to go as far as marking this with blue. Because I marked it, I, I drew it in blue before, didn't I? All right, so I expect an eight to show up somewhere out here. Pay attention. I'm going to hit F10, and notice now, this is now an eight. It was a zero. Go back if you had to, but but anyway, there's there's our short, all right, our S, so to say. Now let's return from this. So we'll, we'll print and notice right line. Right line makes all these changes to the stack. It uses the stack heavily, but notice our S is still hanging out here. Untouched, so we're fine. F11, let's go into two method. F11 on that. Char C gets J. All right, first of all, notice our memory was back to zero. That's just the dot net thing. It just assumes that it wants to zero out all local variables, even though the C sharp compiler is a little more restrictive and forces us to do an assignment before we actually use the variable. Um, if we were programming purely on the missile level, we could just use the variable and it would be a zero. Anyway, our S used to be here, did it not? We had an 8 right here, and now it's back to a 0. We're going to stick a J in C's location, F10, and 6A in hex makes our J. All right, so you can see as the stack grows and shrinks, we're reusing the memory we used before, and so that, that might be another question you get, is, is if you call functions and return from functions, you know, which variables would occupy variables that existed before. And in this case, we we see that C, the letter C, takes up the same memory that S took up uh, before we got here. So pretty cool, pretty cool. And then we print it, and right line makes changes again, and so on and so forth. So stacks can grow, shrink. We reuse the memory. If you ever do some C++, you define a local variable, and you try to use it. For example, in C++, we could do something like this, 
Uh, if we turned off all of our debugging checks, we could say, hey, give me a variable C and print what's there. And whatever was in that memory location before is what we get right here. So anyway, except C++ uses a different write line technique. Yada, yada, yada. I'm off topic.